Hi, this is Dale with Sandpiper Pumps. Our video today, we will show you the proper assembly procedures to install an air end kit into an S1F unit. The procedures you're about to see also coincide with the G1F. We're going to utilize Sandpiper Genuine Parts today. Out front we have a wet end kit and an air end kit. All the components used in these kits are the recommended replacement parts when doing a rebuild. The rebuild you are going to see is accurate in man method and machine. For video purposes, some phases of the work performed have been condensed in time. If at any point in time you feel you need to pause this video to get caught up, please feel free to do so. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and air end kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Sandpiper Genuine Replacement Parts Wet end and air end kits provide a bill of material for the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Sandpiper recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at sandpiperpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warner Up video on safety at sandpiperpump.com. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considered easier to work with than a pump that has been in a process. Additional time may be required for removal of outer chambers and some of the castings in this unit. These are the recommended tools used with this rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, needle nose pliers, sockets and or wrenches, 1 half inch, 9 sixteenths inch, 5 eighths inch. Let's get started. For video purposes, we'll be using a 3 eighths inch cordless impact gun. Begin by removing the discharge manifold. Once the cap screws are removed, we can now remove the discharge manifold. Once the manifold is removed, we remove the discharge balls and the seats. Set these items off to the side. We can now roll the pump upside down setting it on the, the outer chambers. We can now get to the cap screws securing the suction manifold into place. Remove the manifold cap screws and the manifold. Remove the seats. You can roll the unit over and remove the suction check balls. Roll the unit up on its side. We can now remove the eight cap screws, securing the outer chamber into place. Set the outer chamber to the side. We can now access the diaphragm assembly. Spin the outer plate in a counterclockwise rotation and spin the assembly from the diaphragm rod. Once the assembly is removed, you will have the outer plate, diaphragm, and inner plate assembly. Remove the diaphragm bumper from the diaphragm rod. Roll the unit up on its side. Again, removing eight cap screws to remove the opposite outer chamber. Once the chamber is removed, we can now push the diaphragm rod through the intermediate assembly and remove the second diaphragm assembly. We now want to remove the air inlet cap, gaskets, pilot valve, and pilot valve gasket.
Roll the intermediate around and remove the four cap screws securing the main air valve assembly in position. Once these are removed, you can remove the main air valve assembly and the main air valve gasket. We are now ready to remove the U-cup seals from the intermediate housing. There is one U-cup seal on each side. Once the U-cup seals are removed, we can now remove the retainers that secure the plunger pin bushings and plunger pin o-rings into place. Remove both retainers By using a wood screw or a similar item, simply thread into the plunger pin bushing and pull out to remove. With a small screwdriver, remove the plunger pins and the plunger pin o-rings. The O-rings actually sit down in an O-ring groove, so be careful when removing them not to scratch the casting. Once these items are removed, we are now ready to install our new air end kit. Remove the items from the package. Once they are removed, we can sort them out. First, we want to start with the U-cup seals. Install a light coating of grease to the outside of the U-cup seals to aid in the installation. Make sure the lip of the U-cup seal points up towards the diaphragm. Install the plunger pin o-ring. Make sure it goes down into the o-ring groove. Next we want to install the plunger pin bushing. This can go in in either direction. Once the bushing is installed, we now need to secure it into place with the retainer. The curvature of the retainer must go down towards the bushing. Lubricate the inside of the U-cup seal and the bearing area. Repeat these processes for the opposite side of the center section. The second plunger pin o-ring, the second plunger pin bushing, and the retainer go in the same way as the opposite side. Once locked into position, we are now ready to install the plunger pins. Apply a generous amount of grease to the end of the plunger pin. This in turn will lubricate the o-ring and the plunger pin bushing during installation of the pin through the bushing area. Install one on each side. These have to be installed from the pilot valve area. We are now ready to install our new pilot valve and gaskets and air inlet cap. Roll the intermediate up, push the plunger pins back out of the way not to catch the pilot valve, install the pilot valve gasket, the pilot valve assembly, the air inlet cap gasket, and the air inlet cap. Install the air inlet cap so the word inlet is at the top towards the serial number plate. Install the four cap screws holding this assembly into position. Once the four cap screws are reinstalled, tighten these cap screws to manufacturer's recommendations. Once the air inlet cap is secured into place, roll the unit over 
We are now ready to install the main air valve assembly. The important thing on this is to line the gasket up with the main air valve body. The slots in the holes line up with the main air valve assembly. Set the unit on top of the intermediate. Install the four cap screws to secure it into place and torque the cap screws to manufacturer's specifications. We need to check the inside radiuses of our intermediate for any imperfection and dress up accordingly. Apply a light coating of grease to the diaphragm rod. Slide the assembly into the intermediate housing. Line the holes up with the diaphragm. At this time we can install some of the cap screws we use for the outer chamber to hold the assembly into position. Once these are installed, we can roll the assembly over, install the bumper, and ready our second assembly for installation. Lubricate the inner seal, lubricate the outer radius, install the diaphragm with the natural bulge out, install the inner diaphragm plate with the radius towards the diaphragm. For easier installation we want to invert the diaphragm. This assembly can easily be installed into the intermediate and catch the diaphragm shaft and spin on in a right hand clockwise position. Once snug down to the shaft, we now need to align the diaphragms to the bolt holes in the intermediate. Never go backwards on this assembly. Always tighten in a clockwise position and align the hole to the next hole ahead of you. So the hole in the diaphragm lines up with the hole in the intermediate. Once aligned properly, you can remove the cap screws from the opposite side. Now we are ready to install our outer chamber. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine faces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Scarring, scratches, or material buildup can be cleaned up using emery cloth, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. The discharge side of the chamber should be up towards the serial number plate. Install the eight cap screws to secure the outer chamber into position. Roll the unit over. Using a pry bar, get underneath the inner plate of the diaphragm assembly and push down to invert the diaphragm to the discharge stroke. You can now invert the diaphragm over and line up the holes to install the second outer diaphragm chamber. As the opposite side, inspect the seat area where the, the check ball seats are going to go. Inspect the suction side ball cages to ensure they are in good condition. The discharge side of the chamber should be up towards the serial number plate. Install the eight cap screws, securing the outer chamber into place. Once these are installed into place, roll the unit over so the suction side of the pump is up towards you. Install the suction balls. Install the suction seats. Seats can go in either way. There's no up, no down. They can go in either direction. We are now ready to install the suction manifold. Inspect the face of the manifold where the seats go for integrity. The suction manifold can go on in either direction for customer specifications.
install the eight cap screws that hold the manifold into place. Please notice the gap between the suction manifold and the outer chamber. This will not be a face-to-face -face casting. These are a hard seat, so it will not squeeze completely together. Once secured, flip the unit over. We are now ready to install the discharge seats and check balls. Orientation of the manifold is based on the process's requirements and may be installed in either direction. Inspect the discharge manifold, the ball cages to ensure that they are in good condition, they are not worn or any sharp edges. Install the eight cap screws and secure the manifold into position. We now need to remove the, the muffler assembly from the old air valve assembly. Remove the four machine cap screws and the muffler assembly. Install the white element first with the outside cage over top of the element and reinstall the four machine screws. This completes the installation of the air end kit into the S1F aluminum fitted unit. We have replaced items such as main air valve, pilot valve, and internal components. For more information on this rebuild, visit us on our website at sandpiperpump.com or you can contact the after sales support department at service.warrenrup at idexcorp.com. Thank you.